And I bought a company in South Carolina. I flew down to be there the first day. It was about a $55 million company. So in, in, important acquisition. I was, I walk into, it was March of 97. I walked into the uh, lunchroom. They have a cup of coffee as the office was opening. Nobody knew me. I didn't know them. So I, they just kind of ignored me. And I was just watching people. And, and it was March. So everybody it was betting on March madness in the pools. And they were having fun. You could just see the fun talking about which teams won, which teams they thought were going to be in the final four. And the closer it got to eight o'clock, you could just see the fun go out of their body when they went to work. So my first revelation was that day when I, in hindsight, when I said to myself, why can't business be fun? Why do we call it work? And I started deploying some ideas on aligning value creation, fun, and games. And I just wanted people to have fun. But what happened is revenue went up dramatically, but joy went up by a thousand percent. That was the first revelation. The second was we were in church a few years later. My mentor was the rector of our church. And one day I got up from the, the service and I looked at Cynthia and I said, you know, Ed, our rector has only got us for one hour a week. We have people in our care for 40 hours a week. We are 40 times more powerful than the church to influence people's lives in our span of care. As I walked out of that church, I went to the next step and I said, oh my God, business could be the most powerful force for good in the world if we simply cared about the people we had the privilege of leading. That was the second revelation. The third occurred uh, a couple of years later, again, at a wedding in Aspen. A friend of mine was walking his daughter down the aisle and typical, wonderful, nice uh, uh, service. And as my friend got his daughter to the altar, he said, her mother and I give our daughter to be wed to this young man. And he sat down next to his bride, uh, his wife. And uh, all of a sudden I said to myself, we're all in awe of this precious young man and young lady getting married. But all 12,000 people that work for us in the world are just like them. They're somebody's precious son or daughter that's been placed in our care. And the way we treat them will have a pr profound effect on their life. And I, that day, the, the most significant, the culmination of these three transformative revelations, that day was the biggest turn. Because I, in hindsight, I always looked at the people in our organization as there for my success. I need an engineer, I need an accountant, I need <clears throat> receptionist, et cetera. And that day I realized they're not functions. They're somebody's precious child that's been placed in my care. And that changed everything for me. It completely reversed my view of people that I had the privilege of leading. 